Hello, Craig Smith from the Home Education Foundation in Palmerston North, New Zealand. We're talking about how you can educate your children at home. And as we're saying before, education starts with the very most foundational question, how can I know God? How can I be reconciled to my Creator in Heaven? So how do we share the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? How do we share this with our children? Well, first of all, we need to be living it every day. We need to demonstrate to our children that this is numero uno in our lives. Our children need to see us in prayer, reading the Bible, and endeavoring to apply what the Bible says to our personal lives. They need to, our children need to see us struggle with these issues of salvation and lordship. How do I make Jesus Christ Lord in this life? In various areas of my life. And it's not easy and we struggle with these things. We need to allow our children to see us struggle and hear us as we work our way through some of these things. My, my, I've had to do this many a time when I've offended a workmate or I've written letters to the editor that were so fiery. People would come around to here to our home shaking with rage to confront me about something I'd written in the letter to the editor. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> we'd, we'd have a discussion and I'd finally I'd work out who they were and I'd start giving them a bit of their own back. So I'd done this kind of thing. I had offended workmates. I had said uh, rude and unkind words, disrespectful words to older people who had turned up on our doorstep to talk about something I'd written in the letters to the editor. And I realized that these people, like this one guy in particular, he was old enough to be my father, and I had spoken disrespectfully to him. My children had heard me, they'd seen me, and I'd kind of written him off, and he walked away. And I, maybe I said some words, they figured, well, I guess I showed him, I don't know, some such outrageous things. And it, it, as soon as I said that kind of stuff, God convicted me in my mind. Oh man, you, you have done something that is really bad. You have been disrespectful to an older man, old enough to be your father, and your children watched you be disrespectful. What kind of a, what kind of an example is that? Oh, I realize that's that's a bad example. So I called the children. I said, "Children, you know what I've just done?" And I confessed my sin before my children. I've. Uh, been disrespectful. I need to go apologize to this gentleman. Oh, no, you don't, Daddy. Well, he deserved it, blah, blah, blah. No, he didn't. Nobody deserves that. <clears throat> Everybody deserves respect, and I failed to deliver respect, which the Bible says, and I showed him that we are to respect. Well, fortunately, I knew who this fellow was. I was able to find his name in the phone book. I realized where he lived. Guys, I'm going to go, I'm going to go apologize. And I start walking around the backyard. I didn't want to apologize. That was going to be hard work. I didn't want to do that. So I was struggling with it. Oh, Lord, do I really need to go apologize? Do I really, can I get out of this? And I was saying that out loud. The children heard me. Finally, I decided, no, i got to go do this right. Where's the keys? Let's go hop in the car. So the children saw me make that decision, hop in the car, and I drove out to this guy's house. Now God works these things out really nicely. So I get out of the car, I'm walking down the driveway, and he he meets me from the back door walking out. And uh, we meet, we shake hands, and I said, oh, uh, I'm so sorry for the way I spoke to you. I uh, was disrespectful. I, there was no call for that. And I want to apologize for that. And he was coming out to his car. He was going to drive to my place and apologize for bursting in on the scene like he did. I mean, it was really interesting. The Lord was working on both of us. Well, we apologized to one another, and uh, we had from that moment on a much higher degree of respect for one another. We didn't agree on anything. We didn't clear the air what the issue was, stayed the issue. But um, we had a higher degree of respect one for another, and always waved and always... Uh, had a kind word for one another ever after. And it was very good. <clears throat> we still had plenty of good letters 
to the editor, don't worry about that. So the readers got their money's worth out of a still. <clears throat> the editors enjoyed it, I guess. But my children saw their dad struggling with this issue. And another time when I had offended a, a client or someone else. And, uh, and I came to the conclusion I had to go and apologize. And I didn't want to do that. And I was again wandering around the backyard. Lord, I don't want to do this. Don't if I can get out of it, let me out of it. And my children were watching me looking for a way out of it. Finally, I realized, oh, there's no way out of it. I gotta go do it. Rats. Okay, well, let's go get it over and done with. So I went over to this client's house, or my workmate, or whoever it was, and apologized profusely. And uh, again, couldn't get to the bottom of the issue. This person thought I was a, an ogre be, for various reasons. <clears throat> and uh, so we talked about it. And um, this person was a Buddhist, and I was, a, and still am a Bible believing Christian. And of course, uh, the Buddhist was more of a pacifist. I had made comments that didn't fit into a pacifistic sort of a framework. And so this Buddhist person didn't like me for that reason. Thought I was an ogre because I was advocating what in her mind was a means of violence. Well, I wasn't advocating any such thing. But I uh, was open to uh, uh, thinking that in her mind was totally violent and unacceptable. Well, we got to share uh, uh, our religious points of view over a cup of coffee and that was very nice and I apologized for the fact that I had offended her but I did not apologize for what I said I believed in what I said and I gave my reasons why and she put her cards on the table and the same thing we were able to see each other's point of view and appreciate it neither of us agreed with the other's point of view at all neither of us accepted the other's point of view but we did apologize for the fact that we had offended one another and we were sorry for that fact that we had offended and that is unfortunate it's just a fact of life it seems but ever after that whenever we would see each other in the street it was always a friendly wave and a nice word it was a very good relationship after that and so my children had seen me struggle with that and overcome that I knew what I had to do I didn't want to do it it wasn't pleasant doing it apologizing you know you have to eat eat humble pie and all that stuff but you just go do it anyway because it's the right thing to do <clears throat> and it was the right thing to do I knew because the Bible told me this is the right thing to do so the children got to see me struggle with that and to follow through so they became stronger in their own faith as a result and it wasn't long after that one of my children decided she needed to walk down the street a couple of houses and visit a little friend with whom she had had a tiff and she needed to sort that out and so they did have a bit of a chat they sorted out what the, whatever the problem was and they're good buddies again they could at least now play with one another whereas before they couldn't and uh, she did that as a result of watching me going through that so it was very good monkey see monkey do very involved principle there monkey see monkey do and so my daughter got to go and be reconciled to her little friend down the road and that worked out really well Christianity is reality folks the Bible has the answers for all of your life's questions it's all in there read it you would be amazed at uh, the wisdom that's just locked up in there it's absolutely brilliant <clears throat>